Let me be clear about this. Three prime ministers in one parliament, with a few malcontents seeking a fourth, does not help the perception of the centre of government. Nor does a Supreme Court ruling that the government has broken the law. Nor is it a good optic when ministers indulge in public arguments, openly blame, or in one or two occasions, insult their civil servants. Or when they favour the advice of often inexperienced political advisers over that of civil servants with years of specialist experience and knowledge. Or when they sack senior civil servants who offer candid advice which simply did not suit the government's thinking. I know of one who told me he was removed because he was, I quote, not one of us, nor should he have been. The role of the civil servant is not to be one of us, not to be partisan, but to benefit policy by possessing an institutional memory and offering impartial advice without fear or favour. If he is going to be moved because the advice is unwelcome, then he will not offer advice to the ministers that perhaps they should have, and that will not help the administration of government or the policy of the elected administration. Now, none of that conduct is conducive to high morale or good government. Our politics needs changes to create and project a far more effective and trusted system. We are not a presidency. Personally, I do not wish to see an increase in the power of number 10. Constitutionally, the Prime Minister has few powers. In practice, he or she has many, simply because of the position they hold. With a large majority, a Prime Minister can be almost unconstrained in his or her actions. We see that in many pseudo-democracies. My preference is quite clear. I prefer effective cabinet, effective cabinet government to prime ministerial diktat. I may be wrong. It may be that I'm out of date and those particular changes are desirable. But I admit, frankly, I am uneasy about them. Now, number 10 is a very different place than once it was. I go back into the dark ages, uh, perhaps. But in the 1980s and 90s, uh, number 10 had about 100 staff. It now has three and a half times that number, at, no doubt, three and a half times the cost. But I have seen no evidence yet, not shown to me, certainly, that it is three and a half times more efficient. Indeed, hearsay suggests precisely the opposite. Similarly, in the 2000s, the Cabinet Office had around 1,600 staff. I am told it now has over 10,000. That is, of course, partly because of Europe, because the preparation done for the European referendum was inadequate. After the referendum had been uh, had voted the way it did, many new decisions had to be taken that had not been considered, and they were all just loaded on to the Cabinet Office, which accounts for that huge swelling in numbers. Yet even so, I'm unconvinced it's more efficient. I'm equally dubious about splitting the roles of Cabinet Secretary and Head of the Civil Service. Again, a controversial point, and one that's arisen before. I'll explain why. The Civil Service is the delivery arm of government the engine of the whole machine. Its work is absolutely crucial. If the civil service fails, government fails. For those reasons and others I have no time to uh, include, I believe its head should be the most senior civil servant, the only one with daily and direct access to the prime minister, and that is the cabinet secretary. We can be proud of the UK's reputation as one of, some would say, the most stable democracy in the world. We should cherish this. But but if the government or parliament fails to meet the standards expected by the public, then trust in our political system will fail. I regard it as essential for our future to attract more of our most able people to parliament and to the civil service. I remember speaking to schools and universities many years ago and asking how many wanted to go into elected or non-elected public service. And practically 40 to 50% said yes. Today, it is very nearly a nil return. And that is not healthy for the administration or the politics of government. 